Protect your privacy online with the number one rated VPN on the market, ExpressVPN, and get three months free when using my referral link. Hey everyone and welcome back to another GTA Online Kyoprico Heist in-depth guide. Today we're going to be checking out the Combat Shotgun. It has been such a long time since we've gotten a new shotgun in this game. I think the last one was like the Sweeper Shotgun or something. Unless you count the Pump Shotgun Mark II as new. But we're going to be doing some comparisons in between the Assault and the Pump Shotgun Mark II since those are its two main competitors. And as with all of my testing videos, the stats that I go over today are all found through in-game testing and calculations and they may or may not represent actual numbers found in the files. Now, the combat shotgun is different in the sense that you have to unlock it in the heist before being able to use it in your own arsenal. And to do that, during the Caprico heist finale, there are seven different spawn locations inside of the compound, showcased by the green shotgun icons on the map right here. It's going to spawn at one of those spots at random, and once you find it, you just have to pick it up and it'll be unlocked for you. And as I show the spawns in-game, the icon on the map that corresponds to the location will glow yellow instead of green. The first spawn is going to be right at the front entrance of the compound. All you have to do is go up the stairs, and you'll find it leaning against the brown table to the right. The next potential spawn point is located near El Rubio's office. It'll be leaning against the red wall right here. These next few are all located very close to each other. You can find it leaning against the fountain right here. This is actually where I found mine at. It can also spawn near the back of the compound facing the water, close to where the entrance for the drainage tunnel approach is. The pool side is another spawn point for the combat shotgun. It'll be leaning against this wooden pole right here. Then we have the flower pot spawn. For this one, it's just going to be leaning up against it. Very simple. And then next to the flower pot area, there are some stairs which lead to an area kind of like the one near the entrance, and it'll be positioned against one of the tables again. The best way I would say to get the shotgun is to use the guard outfit so I can just roam around the compound without worrying about being spotted. Obviously you'll still have to worry about the red cones division, but when I tried to find the shotgun I literally killed everyone inside the compound because I was doing it stealthy, so it's really not ideal. After you do unlock it though, you're going to have to go purchase an ammunition. It costs about $300,000 so it's kind of pricey. But that's it for unlocking the shotgun. Now how does it perform? Well, its lock-on range is 35 meters with a max range of 40 meters, which is the exact same as the pump shotgun and the assault shotgun. There's no difference there at all. Now when discussing damage and damage drop-off ranges with shotguns, it's kind of complicated and it's really hard to test for because damage depends on how many pellets hit the target. And how many pellets hit the target is dependent on how accurate the shotgun is, so what I'm doing here is standing at a consistent distance from the wall and just shooting each of the three shotguns. Just to get a judge of their accuracy, the combat shotgun I performed the test twice because it has quite a lot of recoil and the recoil doesn't subside faster than it can fire. So if you fire it as fast as it can go in semi-auto, the accuracy is going to be a lot worse. So for one of the tests, I feathered the shooting and waited for the recoil to subside, and on the other one, I fired as fast as I could. And you can tell right away the assault shotgun is the least accurate one out of the bunch, and you can also tell that there is a difference in accuracy between feathering the fire and rapidly firing the combat shotgun. The feathered shot accuracy is pretty much identical, if not better, than the pump shotgun Mark II's accuracy. Knowing that information, let's take a look at damage values now. The combat shotgun is a two-shot kill to the body, even at point-blank range, and you might think that's terrible, but none of the shotguns in this game are capable of one-shotting straight to the body from point-blank range, not with regular shells anyways. The difference is the damage that is done with the first shot. The combat shotgun drops their health to a little under half, it's about 40% health remaining, the Pump Shotgun Mark II drops their health to around 15%, and the Assault Shotgun seems to be about the same as the Combat Shotgun in terms of damage per pellet. For damage drop-off, the Combat Shotgun stopped becoming a two-shot kill to the body at around 8 meters, however, it's kind of inconsistent. Like I said before, it all depends on if the pellets hit the target or not. The Assault Shotgun also two shots up to 8 meters as well. And the pump shotgun can two shot from up to 18 meters away. And this is because the pump shotgun does a lot more damage per pellet than the other two. So even if some pellets miss, it's still capable of two shotting because it just doesn't need that many pellets to hit. Now let's look at the one shot headshot range. With the combat shotgun, it has a very good one shot headshot range. I was able to one shot my friend Endercrafter to the head at a consistent 25 meters. 
And the max range I was able to one-shot him to the head was 28 meters, which is farther than some assault rifles. Now obviously, 28 meters is not going to be the norm, that's just when you get lucky and all the pellets line up perfectly to hit him. The pump shotgun shares the same stats, it's also capable of one shot to the head at around 25 meters, but the assault shotgun was only able to one shot to the head consistently at 18 meters. Another thing we tested was the one shot headshot range if the enemy has a bulletproof helmet on, because if you guys didn't know, before armor piercing rounds existed, shotguns were the only way to punch through a bulletproof helmet fast because the helmet only blocks two shots and the shotguns shoot many pellets at once. Naturally, this is going to be not as far since it requires that more than two pellets make contact with the head in order to break the helmet, and then any other pellets after that will deal headshot damage. And with the combat shotgun, you can one-shot a helmet user consistently at around 15 meters, and the same goes for the other two shotguns, the assault and the pump. And you're probably wondering why the ranges are the same here, but not for just the standard headshot. And the reason they are the same here is that 15 meters is close enough for all the shotguns to land more than two pellets on a target's head, even the assault shotgun, so they kind of overlap there. But as you saw in the other test, the assault shotgun really struggles at keeping accuracy at longer distances. So to sum up the combat shotgun, it's kind of like a more accurate and less rapid fire version of the assault shotgun. It has that higher accuracy which allows it to have more effective range when aiming for the head, but it still lacks the pellet damage that the pump shotgun has. In PvE it's pretty good if you do hit headshots in auto aim, but the one thing that really holds it back is the mag size. Now I know it's not a magazine, but for the sake of this video we'll call it that. You can only shoot 6 times before having to reload, which is not that good at all. I really wish they would have went for at least 8 or maybe even 10 shots before having to reload. Maybe in the future we'll get a Mark II version of this gun where we can put like a grip attachment on it to help with that recoil and definitely some more ammo before having to reload. But for now, this is what we got. But that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed or found it helpful, feel free to leave a like as well as subscribe to my channel for more Kyo Perico Heist content. I want to give a massive shout out to my friend Endercrafter for helping me record and test for this video. As well as to all of my channel members for supporting me. If you'd like to become a member for some exclusive perks, you can either use the join button or the link that's down in the description. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.